Hey everyone, it's Thomas here. So for the next five days, I'll be posting a video every single day with the hope of raising money to help fight this pandemic. Now, if you've already seen this message, because I'm posting the same message every single day, just skip to this timestamp. So let's not use this space to debate about the pandemic. It's not the place for it. Now on my wife's side, somebody did pass away from it. So first-hand experience. Heck, everything on Thomas Stereo, first-hand experience, man. So the reason why I'm doing this is simply because I want to help. I want to do something for, to help with this disaster. And I believe a lot of people also want to do something. And one of the things that's stopping them can be the fear of not knowing for sure if the money they're giving out is going to the right place. Now, that's why I took some time to research on Doctors Without Borders to make sure that they're legit. I have spoken to them. My, my friend have met doctors from there. Someone I know has volunteered there. So I'm pretty sure they're legit. You know, this YouTube channel is one of the best thing I ever started in my life. Not only it gave me the chance to feel like a movie star when I go to a hi-fi trade show, it also allowed me the chance to try different gear as well as meeting people. Brought a whole community together and gave me the chance to interact with people. And uh, for that alone, it's totally worth all the energy and time I spend building this channel. Now, if I can use this channel to make the world a better place by bringing some positiveness to it, that would be so incredible. So that's part of the reason why I want to start this fundraiser. I also want to take this time to say thank you because I'm about to reach 30,000 subscribers. Can you imagine that 30,000 people click on the subscribe button? That alone is a miracle in itself. All right, so let's start today's video. Um, it's been a while since I made a video just chatting. It's, uh, you know, no review today. And I just want to share my experience with um, why I think Power Amp is very important. I think a lot of people don't realize that. And they focus mostly on the speaker. Some focus mostly on the source. But for me, on my journey, I think Power Amp is something that you should really look into. In my system, the most expensive gear is the speaker. Yes, I know speaker has the most impact on the sound but don't underestimate the importance of the power amp. So given that this should be a short video, why don't I share with you the story as to how I come to this conclusion where power amp is so important. All right, so for those of you who don't follow me, the reason why I got into audio is because I got a chance to listen to this high-end system from my friend. And that system is about $100,000 at the time. It's like I've been watching 27-inch TV CRT all my life and somebody shows me this 100 inch OLED 4K TV it changed my life and that's where I realized wow stereo can be so amazing so I went home I told myself you know what okay $100,000 system I bet you it's all marketing I can build a system for a few grand and if I buy on the used market maybe 1.2 1.4 grand and it's gonna be 90% of that $100,000 system that's seriously what was going through my mind and I'm gonna take the approach that Speaker is the most important. 80% budget on speaker and 20% on whatever else I need to make this thing work. So I got myself this speaker, Atlantic Technology AT1. Now, on, at the time listed on Amazon, it was about four grand Canadian. Yeah. And uh, I got it for like less than a grand. Like, really good deal. Beautiful speaker, piano finish. You have even a glass plate on top. And uh, I read some good reviews on it from Stereophile uses the transmission line principle. People say you don't even need a subwoofer, the thing rocks. And then I say, you know what? Okay, I need an amp to go with it. So I got myself an integrated amp. Integrated amp meaning a preamp and a power amp combined in one unit. And I got myself the Harman Kardon 3490. I read some reviews on it and people say it's really good. So I say this plus the AT1, damn 90% of my friend's system, that's $100,000 brought it home, powered it up, and I'm like, you know what, you know, I, I'm not really good at listening because I'm just starting out, but compared to my friend's $100,000 system, I, I can hear a, a difference. Heck, I can hear a big difference. What, what is wrong? I thought that I'm supposed to get a lot of bass, but there's no bass. You know, it, it doesn't sound anything close to my friend's system. I bet you all those reviews I read are fake. And, and I'm sure some of you have felt that too. Man, Thomas say that this is so good. I bring it home and it's like, meh, whatever. I'm sure some of you have gone through that too. 
So I say, what a disappointment. And I put the speaker away on the side. I say, all right, maybe I need to get something more expensive. So I went out and I buy other speakers and I keep going and going and going. So as I move up the speaker world, got some dying audio, Canton, Pioneer, I realize it's good, but it's not a big leap forward. It's still so far away from my friend's $100,000 system. So I'd say, what is the problem? So eventually, my, uh, Mr. Cantor's friend told him, you guys need to get some serious front-end gear. So I told myself, yeah, okay, fine. Went online, searched for the most expensive thing I can afford, and I came across this Cambridge 851W851P. So it's uh, my first separate unit. Brought it home, plug it to, at the time it was the Pioneer S3EX, and I'm like, oh, okay. You know what? It sounds better. It's true. Wow, you know, front-end gear, if I get something better, it does sound better. But that's not the part where it changed my mind completely. Remember that speaker, that AT1 that I put on the side collecting dust because it's not good enough? I decided to sell it because I had too many speakers at a time. And I told myself, you know, Thomas, wow, this speaker is special because it's my first speaker ever, like the first serious speaker ever. I'm going to plug it into these new high-end power amp well, high-end relative to what I got before. So I decided to plug it in to the Cambridge, the AT1. And I remember when I first powered up, I'm like, wow, these speakers are actually this good. So all those reviews that I, I read, uh, like Stereophile, they were actually true. This bass actually does go really low. So you know what? If I had a good power amp to start off with, this channel, I would never made it. Even if I look back today with all the speakers I've listened to, I would say that it's still good enough. Of course, now I'm a bit more picky, but I would say that speaker, you know, even had tone control at the back of it, is good enough for a lot, a lot of people. I would be satisfied if I have to live with it. If my wife tells me, that's it, you're keeping the speaker for the rest of your life, I'll be okay with it. So eventually I move up in the speaker world. Like when I got my first Focal, the 1028, that my MRSP when it first came out, I think it was close to 10 grand. And I remember when I brought it home, I told myself, what, this is it? This is what 10 grand buys you? This is not that much better than my other like four grand speaker. But this time I got experience. I say, I bet you it's because my power amp cannot catch up with these speakers. So I went out and I cleared my bank account and I bought like five power amps home. Like the Bryston, the Macintosh, the Class A's, borrow my friend's past lab, just to bring out that full potential of the 1028. It was, it was, that was my journey. That was the start where I start playing with more expensive power amp. One thing I realized though, big time, okay? Ever since I upgraded my power amp, anything I put in my system sounded good. Now this is important for me, you know all these speakers that, were, that I brought home that I was not satisfied with and I resold, I sold, I sold. I did that because I was not able to bring out the full potential of those speakers. I bet you a lot of those speakers I cycle through are fantastic. It's just that I judge them based on the power amp I had. So ever since I upgraded the power amp, even a $300 speaker, Elac debut 6.2 which sound, sounds fantastic. So that's why at my home, I bet you, when I listen to, let's say, the Triangle Bro 3, it's very different than when you listen at your place. With a fully treated room, with a system that can fully power it, it's completely different. And I know that because yesterday, when I made the video on the 3050i, right, moving from the Marantz all the way up to my own reference system, it changes the speaker completely. So the point I'm making is that don't underestimate how important the power amp is. For me, it's probably one of the most important thing in the system. Now, what do you look for in a power amp? If you think about it, when you buy a power amp and you bring it home, what makes you want to keep this power amp? Okay, putting aside the fact that it's class A, class AB, class D, you like the sound signature. For some people, maybe I want bass. So you buy a power amp that has a lot of bass, for example. I want to add more holographicness to my soundstage. So you have your tube preamp to do that, but you can add a tube power amp to increase the, the, the holographicness. So everybody chooses power amp for different reasons. What about you? What, what, do you, what do you look for in a power amp? For me, when I choose a gear, 
there's such a thing called a deal breaker. Okay, it has to do at least this, else I don't want it. For example, that, the deal breaker for me is analog sounding enough, period. Okay, if it's not, I don't care if you can do everything else really good, it doesn't matter to me. Power amp for me, it's gonna sound weird, okay? It has to be fluid enough. Not smooth enough, fluid enough. Smooth because you can sometimes roll off the top end and it sounds smooth. Some older classy power amp that I come across, that's how it feels. You can tell it's smooth because it's kind of rolled off on the top end. So I'm, I'm missing a bit of detail. And in the past, I've explained it this way. Okay, for simplicity, I'm just going to call four-cylinder car versus an eight-cylinder car. Okay, V4 versus V8, not L4 versus V8. Anyway, you guys get it. So when you drive a four-cylinder car up a mountain and an eight-cylinder car up a mountain, they both can get up the mountain. But the person driving it is going to feel the difference between a V4 and a V8. Maybe another word I can use to describe it is authority. The power amp has to grab onto the speaker and control it fully. So maybe that's why it gives me that sensation that it's very fluid. So when I audition power amp, it's going to sound weird. Okay, I know this is going to sound absurd. I don't listen to power amp. I actually feel the power amp, meaning does it make me feel comfortable? Like, is there hesitation in the power amp or is effortless? I guess the, another word would be effortless. Okay, it's just something to think about, okay? So, guys, I know it doesn't make sense, you know, how do you feel a, a power amp? You know, it's like, give me a break. So, does it mean that if I take power amp A and B and I cover your ears, you can tell me which one is better without listening to it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it sounds absurd, but just for the sake of discussion, all right? So, thanks for helping out with the fundraiser. I reached my target of $500 within three days. And I was telling myself, guys, if I can reach my stretch target of a thousand by Sunday, uh, next week, I'll make three to five videos to say thank you. I think three, five is a bit hard. All right, guys, I'll see you next time.